This is scenario two where you do not have the device configuration backed up. In those cases, you will lose the device and the user specific settings. However, you should be able to recover the data store, which contains the critical data. This is the TrueNAS operating system. Before the corruption, you can see that the version is TrueNAS 13.0 U6.2. And if you come to accounts, you will see users. There's one user, test one, which is the custom user. If you come to the storage section, click on disk, you will see three disks, ADA0, ADA1, DA0. TrueNAS operating system is installed on DA0, which is a flash drive of about 64 GB. ADA0 is the SSD drive, ADA1 is the SATA drive. I have pools created out of them, SATA drive with the name SATA, SSD drive with the name SSD. The video was recorded before the corruption of the TrueNAS operating system on the flash drive. Let me show you the uh, drive information. So 192.168.0.6 is the IP address configured on the TrueNAS device. I have one SSD drive and one SATA drive mounted and I have the data stored created. The critical data stored on SSD and SATA drives you can check out here on my screen so I have some critical data stored here in the video we will show you how you can recover the TrueNAS operating system if it is corrupted or if the drive or the flash drive is faulty where you have installed the TrueNAS the drives are not encrypted the disk that you see here and the pools that we have created there is no encryption going on on the file system there are two possibilities here number one the TrueNAS operating system is corrupted number two the hard drive or the flash drive is in a failed state where the TrueNAS operating system is installed so for both the scenarios the next action plan would be to install the TrueNAS operating system on a new functional hard drive or the flash drive or if the hard drive or the flash drive is functional, you can install the TrueNAS operating system on them. In my case, the flash drive is functional, so I'm going to install the TrueNAS operating system on a flash drive. I have made the pen drive bootable with TrueNAS operating system, so we are ready to do the fresh installation. If you're interested in knowing how to make the pen drive or flash drive bootable with TrueNAS operating system, you can refer the video that I've pinned on screen. Boot priority is updated to boot from the TrueNAS bootable flash drive. IP address changed to 192.168.0.5 Let's try to access the TrueNAS using the updated IP address which is 192.168.0.5 So this is the TrueNAS operating system installed after the corruption and you can see the interface IP is 192.168.0.5 Let's try to configure it back to what it was before the corruption it was .6 so I'll apply the change and I'll test and I will confirm the changes. So I have confirmed the changes. Let's try to import the data drives which contains the critical data. Click on storage, go to disk. You will see ADA0, ADA1, DA0. So DA0 is the flash drive, 
where we have uh, installed the TrueNAS operating system. This is the fresh TrueNAS operating system after the corruption. And ADA0 is the SSD drive, ADA1 is the SATA drive, which contains the data already. So click on pool, click on add pool. And in this particular section, you will have to select import an existing pool and then click on next. No, continue with import. Click on next. And here you will have to select the pool. I'm selecting SATA first. And let's try to click next import let the TrueNAS import the data drive for SATA so now we have successfully recovered the data drive which is the SATA drive now let's try to import the SSD drive or let's try to recover the data drive which is the SSD drive so click on import existing pool click on next no continue with import since there is no encryption click on ssd drive click next import and now you can see that the data drives ssd as well as sata recovered successfully if the data drives are encrypted then you will have to click on pools under storage click on add here you will have to select import an existing pool Next, select yes, decrypt the disk and add the disk from the available option and upload the encryption key and the passphrase that you have given during the encryption and click on next. Let's try to check out the services because the user specific configuration is lost. You will have to enable the SMB. In the sharing, you will have to enable the Windows SMB, click add, mount. First, we'll try with SATA. Allow guest access, submit. Next, we'll try to add the SSD as well. Allow guest access, submit. So now we have the sharing configured. Let's try to go back to storage pool and let's try to have an open access available for these two data stores. Edit permission, select the preset, open, continue. Save. We'll do that here as well. Open, continue, save. So now we have successfully imported the data stores. Let's try to access them and see if we can access the data that were stored in this particular data store. So let's try to check that IP address is 192.16.6. Okay, I can see the SATA and the SSD drive. Let's try to check out if we still have the information available inside the SATA drive and SSD drive. Okay, so you can see that the data is intact and I am able to recover the data successfully. However, the user specific configuration and the device configuration will have to be redone after the TrueNAS operating system installation if you do not have the configuration backup available. That's all in this video. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button.